Hello y'all on YouTube, this is Rob with Rob's Nerdy Knives. Today I have a very special review impressions of a very cool knife I got a chance to check out. And I'm super excited to have the opportunity to do so. I want to thank uh, my awesome subscribers for allowing me to check out the Knoll Knives Voodoo. Otherwise, I would not have had the chance to look at this. And this is such a cool knife, I got to tell you guys. If you get a chance to get in on any of the pre-orders or if you find one in the secondary or if you get in on any of the drops then when he has some extras, don't miss out. This stuff is amazing. I'm going to be trying to hunt one of these down and I may actually break my rule on pre-orders. I don't know. I'm really tempted. It'd be hard for me to do, but I may do it. But this is the Null Knives Voodoo. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about this knife. And as you know, we normally kind of go through our little breakdown of as far as what we do for, for reviews. So um, the first thing we want to talk about is the knife name. This is the Voodoo. He has other ones, the, the Radon and... and um, uh, uh, some other different um, variations of these knives, but this is the Voodoo, and, and, and it really is. It's kind of like Voodoo magic what he's done here in the design. I like that. The manufacturer, uh, I believe this is done by Riot, and uh, the designer, uh, as you can see right here, Certificate of Authenticity right here, um, Acid Wash right here, Knoll Knives, really, really, really cool. I, I like this. This was made in 8-1-2023. Serial number 611, satin, blue micarta, which I actually don't hate at all. Very, very cool. I mean, you know me. I'm not a big micarta fan, but this, this blue micarta looks really, really nice. Anyways, so that is the designer. Uh, very, very cool. Really neat designer. I love what he's done here. Totally breaking the, the design market out there with something very, very cool. All right, the handle liner materials. Let's talk a little bit about that. So we got a blue micarta, which is really nice. And you can sort of see the blue in here. I don't know if it's with the back, uh, green backdrop, it kind of maybe not highlighted as much, but it is blue. Very cool. And these are all nice, beautiful T8s everywhere. Uh, really easy to access all of this stuff on here, which is really, really nice. Um, titanium scales, titanium backspacer with a nice little design with a V, almost like a voodoo. Beautiful titanium mill pocket carry clip. Very, very functional, nice and thin. Work, has a nice little flex to it, so it goes in and out of the pocket really well. You can see that nice there. Um, really well, nice and flat on there. Everything's nicely rounded all the way around the chamfer. It's got a nice little little cutaways, you know, where your hand fits in really nice. You can choke up really nice. So all that material is really wonderful. Captive pivot, but beautiful texturing on that pivot is really amazing. Very simple billboarding, just an N for null knives. You really don't see much of anything else, which is really, really nice. Um, Blade material and the blade steel. As we already talked about, this right here is uh, M390. Yeah, M390 is a blade steel. I'm pretty sure that's the case. Uh, let me double check that because I want to make sure I get you the right information. So we may have to edit this little part right here. I feel like I should have known that ahead of time, but I'm pretty sure it was M390. But I sure would hate to, hate to give you guys some um, bad information. Uh, and so we're gonna we're gonna look. Okay, so I'm back. This is M three ninety blade steel, absolutely. Wonderful, wonderful material. I will say that uh, I think, you know, um, it, it seems to be done really well. The edge is wonderful. The hollow grind is beautiful. Just really thin, edgy, sharp, all that stuff. So I love the edge. I love the acid wash on here. That's really, really nice. That is really cool. The handle design, I mean, obviously you can see it's just beautifully contoured. Fits really well. Even this unique clip here that even feels like it might have a poking point point there is not it's just melts in your hand it really fits well there's no hot spots whatsoever i really really like that the blade seal i guess we can call this a i don't know we want to call this reverse tanto modified worn cliff sheep's foot what well, i don't know what you want to call this i mean uh see here does he does he list it as anything in particular i i don't know i i, I think it's a cool design I think it, it breaks all the design rules in many ways because, you know, it's it's almost like a Bowie sheep's foot clip point reverse tanto uh, Warren Cliff 
and it actually bows just a little bit. It's not perfectly straight. So, I mean, is it a sheep's foot? I don't know. It just, it's just a real modified, cool, unique shape. It kind of breaks all the, the design rules. And, and I like that. I like that. So that's really cool to me. Um, all right. So we talked about the handle. Blue micarta, really nice. Titanium liners, really, really nice. Stop pin there, back spacer. That's really great. Oh, let's talk about the hands, you know, everything else. Uh, really contoured over here is really nice. It is a frame lock. Well, it's really like a bolster lock. So it's a frame bolster lock. You can see that underneath. It's got an over travel stop and a steel bar insert. So you have the steel on the on the on the tang of the blade, and you got about a 30% lockup, which is really cool. It's nice and solid, no blade rock whatsoever. Goes in really nice. You can hear the detent. That locks in, no detent lash. So all that stuff is really good as far as materials. Uh, and how does it open? Well, you've got multiple ways to open. You've got the thumb studs, which are just really unique. And I don't know if you can see that. These are unique thumb studs. They're not your traditional round one. They're almost like volcano, but they've got that beautiful triangle, almost like a V shape. Imagine that, right? For voodoo V shape, really cool. And you got this fuller in here that's very functional. And you've got this jimping that goes all the way up here. And it does allow you to do a front flip. I mean, is it the easiest, most natural? No, but if you like to front flip and you don't, you enjoy that, you have that option. But the thumb studs are ridiculous. They are just fantastic. Work really, really, really nice. I'm digging that. And the fuller, super functional. Super functional, both left and right-handed. And because it's a bolster lock, it's so easy to get in there. There's, you know, you're not gonna push any pressure on there. So easy to work. We're just really, really, really nice. I, I that just, Opening and closing is a joy and a lot of fun. So there you go. Um, what else do we want to talk about? Okay, how, how does it, how's it close? The action is crazy. So it's beautiful, closes down, very controlled. Right now, this is not my knife. I'm not gonna oil it, I'm not gonna tune it, I'm not gonna do anything. I'm gonna return it exactly as I was had the opportunity to check it out. But the action is beautiful. I can tell you when you, and after carrying a little bit, or not carrying, I don't carry it, after you know, flicking it for a little bit, the action just starts to break in. And so I can imagine if I put a little oil in there, this thing would just be super drop shutty. Because typically I'd put a little oil on the detent ball right there, and then maybe a little oil inside the washers, and that tends to loosen things up. If I didn't take it apart, maybe put skiff washers in there, which is something I would do. We'll talk a little bit about this in the end, because I think, you know, there's one thing in this particular knife, and, and I think if you, if you put skiff washers, it's gonna absolutely fix it. So there is a little bit of what, what I would call um, uh, pivot lash, okay? So you can see there's a little bit of, of pivot lash. You can hear that. And that's the pivot actually being a little loose. And a lot of times what happens is it's the, the cage ceramic ball bearings aren't you know giving a nice contact and completely flush. And skiffs really helps with that because you go from maybe typically nine ball bearings to maybe 11 or 13, depending on what goes in there. Could be a 13. Just gives you a lot better contact point, more consistency on the ball bearing size, the ball bearings themselves. And so that tends to, skiffs a lot of times addresses issues like that. And that's just, you know, you know kind of a, you know, not unusual. And, and even Riot, Bestec, every one, every one of those guys will ha sometimes have that issue. It doesn't always happen, but sometimes it does. And skiffs typically will fix that. So the guy who lent this to me, I, I let him know what size it should go in there. I didn't have any. If I had some, I'd have put them in for him. But man, I wish I had had them and we could have checked that out, but I didn't have them. So unfortunately I wouldn't gotten them in time in order to get this back to him. But that will fix that. So the, the action is beautiful in spite of all that. That's, that's a very minor thing. Does it affect the performance of the blade, any of that? No, because it's lock solid here and it's lock solid here. There's no rock or shake in, in the closed position or in the open position. It's just when you're having that drop, you'll hear a little bit, sounds like almost like a rattle, but that's the, that's the, um, the pivot lash. And so that'll really be addressed with washers. So that's just something to think about, but the close is just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, so let's do some measurements on this. Let's see, uh, let's see the weight on this guy, because I mean we are talking about a knife that obviously is you know titanium and it's got micarta inlay. So let's see what do we got. Okay, so we're in ounces. So here we go. Exactly four point zero zero ounces. Wow, that is right on the nose. Exactly four ounces. That's pretty cool. All right, so exactly four ounces on this blade. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of measurements from tip to the end of it. So here's my ruler and I've got from the very tip to the end, we're looking at about eight and a quarter inches for the overall length of the knife. We're looking at the blade to the to the bit, to the the tip of the handle where I'm gonna say three and five eighths of an inch. Yeah, three and five eighths of an inch. The total length of the cutting edge is gonna be about exactly, eh, it's 
right at three and a half inches if you go for the very tip, three and a half inches, right? And then we look at the overall where your hand normally would rest, you're looking at about four inches, maybe four and an eighth of an inch. And if you do the finger troll, which works very nicely, you get up to almost four and five eighths, almost four and 0.75 inches, right? So if you were all the way up there, you probably 4.75. I would pull back a little bit and probably be closer to four and five eighths, right? So plenty of room for, especially for large, extra large, double extra large hands. I mean, this thing, as you can see, medium large hands, I got plenty of room. Extra large, double extra large, even triple extra large, and especially use the finger choil, I mean, even larger hands, right? Beautiful jimping up there. We'll talk about that ergos here in a second. All right, so let's talk about the blade stock thickness. Let's kind of measure that because we're still doing measurements. All right, so let's go ahead and make sure we're at zero. Okay, we're at zero. So the blade sock thickness, we're 140, 146 thousandths of an inch. So 0.146 inches. So just between one tenth and two tenths of an inch. Pretty relatively robust blade, but it does come to a very thin tip here. You've gotta be careful. I mean, this it's pretty stocky here, but that tip is gonna be light. So if you drop this, you'll chip this off. But the nice thing is you can probably flatten that out to a full tanto, you know, reverse tanto kind of. This clip point is unique, but it's fixable, right? I mean, you use some of the, the unique uh, finish on the blade, and unfortunately that would definitely stand out, but you gotta be careful with that. So that's very cool. I think it's a really nice blade stock thickness for sure. All right, so let's talk about the uh, knife category. This is absolutely in the high end. It's right at $400 for this knife, I think, or a little under $400, if I'm not mistaken. The, the Micarta one is, yeah, 360. So this is 360 if you were to, if you've gotten a hold of this one, so it's definitely high end of a knife. But do I think it's worth it? Um, I do. Okay, so just so you know, that is the detent ball. And there is a, if I'm not mistaken, let's look. Yeah, there's a detent track. Yeah, there's a slight detent track that you go on over there for. So, yeah, you have a little detent track that you roll up over. So that's really nice. But you've got to clear the detent. The detent clears about right there. And then it drops. So when you drop this, you want to make sure you drop it down here. You've got a nice finger troll, so you can do that in here. It will catch here if you've got big, meaty fingers like I do. So, you know, got to make sure you kind of clear past that. And so that right there catches, and then it drops really nice. All right. So definitely a high-end knife, for sure. Um, it's definitely not a regular cost. It's not in the... I mean, not... Sorry. Uh, definitely a regular... Uh, uh, sorry. Definitely a high-end knife. It's over $300 but it's less than $600. So I would call it the high-end knife. Did I say that? Uh, if I didn't, forgive me. Let's roll back up, reverse, whatever. High-end knife, under 600, over 300 for sure. Um, but really nice. What's the purpose of this? Well, for some people, this is gonna be a collector's piece, right? Because it's just so unique. They wanna have it in a collection. They wanna, want, don't wanna ever use it. It's kind of limited run kind of sort of thing. I don't know if he's gonna do a version two or not. I don't know how often he does. If he makes a new design, he never does the old one, which is be a real bummer because I wish he would. But uh, if he does, then it's a collector's piece. But for me, any knife that if I were to buy this, it would definitely be an EDC. And I would actually EDC this. Now, personally, I think I like the Radon better for the tip wise. This little point here would be a little, make me a little more cautious for hard use EDC because that tip could easily be bent, hit, you know, tipped or whatever when you're cutting but still really cool and I think it's very functional and very solidly built so you could absolutely do that. Hard use? Yeah, you could hard use but you know at the cost of this knife it's one of those knives where you're at the price range where you're probably going to want to have a fifth pocket knife with you, one that you can beat up a little bit more. Um, by the way, beautifully centered, absolutely centered, even got that little channel there just to show that off so you're, if you're either dead, dead on centered, dead nuts or you're not and this one is so very nice. Um, I think for most people, this is going to be a collection piece. And then for the other people, which I think might be a smaller percentage, it's going to be EDC use. I would be one of those EDC use, but it would be an EDC collection piece because I would carry my collection pieces. I like to experience my lives. Now, does that mean I'm going to go out and chop up woods with this knife? No, I would never. If I owned this, I would not do that. I would definitely carry it open, you know, maybe, you know, boxes, letters, envelopes, and that would be about it. So that would be my purpose of this knife. But I like it. I like it a lot. Um, so let's talk about the ergonomics and feel. I mean, there's just so much to talk about. It's really good. It, it is really, really well done. And I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of Null Knives. I'm so appreciative to the subscriber. Thank you. You're awesome for allowing me to check this out and to get to experience this knife. Um, yeah, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I'm definitely going to try to acquire one, whether I get it on the secondary market or in the drop, I will. I, I just... Just don't know if I have the funds to tie up for a long time for pre-order. I really am tempted more so than I have in a long, 
long, long time. Okay. Truth be told, really tempted. Um, just don't know if I can do it right now, right? But so that's that's the honest truth. I would love to get one of these in my collection. You know, just really cool. I like the design a lot. I think the next one, the Raikou, is the one that, that he's going to be dropping. You should check it out on Noel Knives. Uh, I think it's noelknives.com or something like that. Yeah, noelknives.com. Check them out. Of course, I'll have a link down below, especially for the knife as well. Um, but I like the design. I like the feel of it. It's very ergonomic, really functional. It doesn't roll in your hand. The finger choil is great. The jimping is great. You even have this little kind of harpoon sort of fin up here, which is really great for holding it and controlling it. You can definitely choke up for precision cut. I mean, it's just very ergonomic. No hot spots works really well. Great, plenty of room. Nicely chamfered all the way around. There's corners, but the corners aren't hard and, and cutty. They don't dig into your hands. They don't, they don't cause any hot spots. Everything functions really, really well. Thumb studs work fantastic. They are weird looking at first, but once you start using them, you're like, man, they are just really well engineered, well designed, really cool. It's a nice aesthetic that really, really works. And I like it. I like it a lot. Okay. So that's really cool. All right. Um, uh, opening and closing. Uh, oh, by the way, lanyard hole, there's no lanyard hole. So lanyard folks, sorry if you really miss one. It's not going to have one in this particular case. The clip is wonderful. We already talked about that. I love the design. It doesn't really have a hot spot, even though it kind of comes to a pokey. None of that digs in. So that's awesome. Operating and closing is what I, when I did the unboxing, if you saw it, the unboxing was crazy because it was like, I was like, Oh, and I still am. I'm still, oh, I just, I don't get to use this knife. You know, I just hold it at the desk and I flick it a few times. You know, and that's both a joy and a, a appreciation, but, you know, also frustration because you don't get to really use it. Uh, and, and I would never, never do that with any loaned knife, all right? I just, I wouldn't. Uh, even if they said I could, I just, I have a hard time using somebody else's knife, especially if it's a nice piece of knife in their collection. I just don't want to do that, right? But, Still really, really, really cool. And I like it. The action is great. And so you got to clear that detent. That's the only thing. I, I don't I don't carry this knife and, and use this knife a whole lot. So I always got to remember the detent. I got to get down to here and then it works fine. See, you know, there's some knives, you know, when you drop down there, they work just fine. And once I start remembering that, we're good. Right. And it works really well. Reverse flick and everything. So I like the opening and closing. It's just really nice. It's solid. You get a nice Nice actuation with that. And even the fuller works really, really nice for reverse flicking. Put your finger right in there. Works, oops, of course, hard to do upside down. Okay, let's do that again. Yeah, like that, okay. It's just kind of hard to do this way because I'm kind of turning my hand. But I also like the fact that there's kind of like a little bonus opening with that front flipper. I mean, you can do it. Is It's not totally natural. It's a little bit like the Shaman, you know, the Spyderco Shaman, you can do that. It, I think Spyderco Shaman works probably a little bit easier than this one. But this is still really nice. You can do that. So I think that's really cool. All right, so let's talk about fidget factors. So I give a score of 1 to 10 based on how you can open it. So you got thumb studs. You've got the fuller. So that definitely adds some nice things. So you got a bonus front flipper. That certainly adds to it. And all of those are done really, really well. So I'm going to give this a fidget factor probably around a 6.5. I might give it a 7. I'll give it a, yeah, I'll give it a seven. I mean, technically I was going to do 6.5 because I thought this right here wasn't quite a full deployment method, but I'll give it a seven. Seven fidget factor capability. Now, fidgety goodness out of that seven. So out of seven, you know, how is it a A? Is it a B? Is it a C? Is it okay? Is it great? Is it fantastic? I'm going to give this for the, the, the fuller in that is absolutely 100. Now this is bonus. So Right, this gets you to the seven fidget factor, and this is bonus. So I'm gonna give it a hundred. I, I really do. It's it's great. It's fantastic. It, it's a hundred percent on the fidget factor. For what you have, it works ex exquisitely. It's exquisite. Okay, I'm gonna just tell you, it's exquisite. That's how awesome this is. It's like whoa, great, just fantastic. So there you go. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a hundred, even for this front flipper, because you know that's a bonus. And sorry, you just got to make sure you get you know right place right there. Make sure you got a nice. And it works really well, but you know you got to do a little wrist flick, and it works really nicely. This is bonus, so I'm 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 giving it extra points. I'm giving it to the seven fidget factor, but what for for the bonus factor? What it is? It's a hundred, because it wasn't. I don't think it was intentional to be that. If he'd gone up a little bit higher, you know, then yeah, maybe maybe that was the case, right? Because you know, could he have gone a little higher? Yeah, he could have. You see, it's engaging on the stop pin right there. That top part could have gone up, and it, you know, he could have gone a little straighter with it, and then you would have had that fidgety. You know, or this could have come up 
with a little curve up, right? And could have come up with a little turn there. And then you could have had that and it would have had the better leverage because you're above the pivot right there. Because this is really the, the spot you want to be is right up there where you're right above. Yeah, see, so you, you want to be right above the pivot for the best for the best leverage for the front flipper. And right now, I think, you know, it's 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 a, it's it's not intended, but it works. Right. So anyway, so fidgety goodness, total ramble there. Ignore it if you don't care about it whatever all right so what are my overall thoughts my recommended absolutely recommend this knife yes absolutely it is recommended it's fantastic i like this design i'm very grateful to have a chance to try it out i want to get one of these i do i don't know if it's going to be a voodoo maybe it'll be a uh, uh the, the next one that's coming out what is it called the uh where is it oh man the next one he's got coming out ah uh, sorry i'm just trying to find out the the knife uh, the, uh, the Reiku, the Reiku. Yeah. That's the one he's going to be doing pre-orders. I believe it's September 21st. Yes. September 21st. So check that out. If you can get one of these voodoos off the secondary market, I would highly recommend it. Sometimes people have drops at some of the uh, dealers. If, get on their list. If you see them listed, you know, get on there for notification for when they do drop so you can get one. But yeah, very, very cool. Very, very cool knife. I, I, I absolutely recommend it. It's going to be my recommended higher end knives for sure. Um, I'm just glad I got a chance to try it out and check it out. And I got to get this back to the guy who let me borrow it. Thank you again. If you're watching, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, man. You, you are awesome for allowing me to try this out. I'm really grateful. So that's my thoughts. If you have any questions about the knife, about the review, anything about the channel, please comment down below. I do try to interact and reply to all of my comments. Uh, at least I can right now as the channel is growing, but you know, I still try to go out of my way to reply and engage with everybody. If you have any questions about uh, the channel or future reviews or maybe Rob's ramblings, I'd love to hear your ideas, recommendations. Um, I do appreciate that. I do. That's one of the things I really enjoy about the channel is getting a chance to talk to you guys. So I just want you to know that I do very much appreciate that. Um, Thanks so much for watching today. If you found this content fun, interesting, worthwhile, entertaining, or informative, would you please consider hitting the like button? If you already hit that like button, maybe hit the subscribe button. Subscribing and liking uh, my videos really helps out the channel a lot. allows me to produce more content, do more things, do more things for you guys. Just, you know, I'm really appreciative for that. So thank you. Thank you very much. If you've already done all of that, maybe consider hitting the notification button so you can be notified of future content. And maybe consider being a channel subscriber. I would really appreciate that as well. Uh, not channel subscriber, sorry, channel member. I have a link in the description for memberships. I would love to see any of you guys become channel members. It helps out the channel. You don't have to, but I would, you know, it would really help out the channel. So thank you. So um, with all that being said, if uh, you haven't already done so, I think, am I forgetting anything? No, I think, I think that's everything. So maybe just check me out over here on Instagram. If you haven't had a chance, maybe uh, go over to Instagram and check out Rob's underscore nerdy underscore knives. Again, that's on Instagram at Rob's underscore nerdy underscore knives. Thanks so much for watching today. Have a great day and a great week. Bye.